then what this battery does is uh, it provides a voltage difference between one end and the other end. And really, this is the one thing you use about the battery when you're um, solving a problem about circuit. This fact comes into play when you're applying Kirchhoff's rules. Good. OK. Um, let's say I'm, I'm doing the thing that I keep telling you not to do during lab. And um, I do this. I take a piece of, uh, not piece, uh, I take a battery and take, connect it to two terminals, negative and positive, with a piece of wire. In other words, I have, um, so I, I have shorted the battery. So if I short a battery, question is, you know, what happens? And when you look at this circuit, it's a kind of a self-contradictory circuit in the sense that we said this, um, that the, the defining property of battery is it provides a voltage difference. As in, if you look at points A and B, you look at point A and point B, one thing you can say about these two points is that their voltage is different by this much, and that's because this is a battery. What's the one property of wire that you also use when you're solving circuits? Someone from maybe this side of the class. It's a conductor, so what's, uh, I mean, so that's what it's made out of. But when you're trying to analyze a circuit using Kirchhoff's rules, uh, what's the one property about the wire that you need to use over and over to analyze a circuit? Voltage is constant throughout the whole wire. In other words, you know, if you take, uh, let's say, these two points, points C and D, I know the voltage difference between these two is equal to zero because it's connected by wire. So that, 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 that's where this contradiction comes up. What is the voltage difference between A and B? One part of the circuit says that this should be their voltage difference. The other part of the circuit that I have drawn says what? Yeah, because they are all connected just by wire. Well, something's got to be wrong here. Now, I say this is contradiction, but it's not as though you cannot build that circuit. You can actually build it. You can actually you know, short the battery. I mean, I keep telling you not to do it, but <laughs> nothing actually stops you from doing it. So what do you think will happen when you actually build this circuit? Will the voltage difference between A and B be closer to non-zero, maybe closer to this, or will it be closer to zero? Closer to zero, yeah, let me try that in the simulation. So it's a question of, you know, this is a reasonable simulation. I can build reasonable circuits here, as in I can, um, I can hook up a light bulb and it'll light it up. It's possible that I might have to, wait. I think you need resistors. Oh, yeah, sorry, uh, that's why I couldn't extend it. It just just look like wires. <laughs> okay, um, so I could uh, hook this up to a light bulb, but um, it's probably not going to be quite bright. Yeah, let me um, oops, let me do it with the two batteries so that it'll be brighter. Uh, right, so if I hook it up to this, then you know it lights up the light bulb. And um, so uh, here, what I'm asking is. Uh, or what I'm going to now try to do is, so you can maybe take it for given that if this light bulb lights up, it would be because, wait, can I? Oh wait, I do have a voltmeter, all right. So I can actually use voltmeter here. In, so um, let's see, this is the positive end, negative end, all right, wait, sorry, the other way around. So that's the voltage. So when I connect it to the light bulb, then I still get the same voltage. So, uh, so this is what would happen in a real circuit. So once again, I'm doing it in simulation, not with a real circuit because for safety issues. But in a real circuit, 
if I connect these two wires, oops, uh, why can I? All right. If I connect these two wires together, then this is what you would get. Um, in fact, I think this is making a. Sorry, I should have tried it before class. So one thing that's realistic here is how the, that the batteries are burning. Because <laughs> that's what you would see in a real circuit. And as the battery burns, you wouldn't expect to measure 14.4 volts here. It should have actually been something closer to zero volt. Because as the current flows, uh, so what I want to do now is I want to, so you know, this, how we are modeling things here, so it's the model that's wrong. I have to modify something here to uh, make this model more correct. And what, actually here's one thing I can do that I won't do this time because that's not what I'm trying to demonstrate. But um, you guys saw when we introduced circuits, the resistance of a wire, right? So instead of, uh, so I could actually modify my model this way. So I could modify my model so that wherever I'm drawing a wire, it's not actually a zero resistance wire. It's actually a wire with some amount of resistance. Like I could express things that way. That would be one way to correct this model as in um, here with this circuit, I could have done the thing that um, I did mistakenly. I can actually imagine that the, um, the wire that I'm connecting to this light bulb with, it actually has some resistance. So it's in series with some register. So it you know, lights up the light bulb. And uh, these registers actually slow things down a little. I can model things that way. With that model, everything would be uh, correct. Or ev ev there, you wouldn't have any contradiction with anything. Because when I short, quote unquote, short this battery, then you know, this resistance still makes things slow down. All the voltage drop happens over these registers. And you would get, you know, you wouldn't have this statement here, and everything will be consistent with how you would analyze the circuit. So that's one way to look at it, and that's uh, how you saw it in the when we introduced the circuit with the power supply. It was able to provide a large amount of current, like one ampere, with a small amount of voltage, right? I want to look at things other way, you know, uh, when you build the circuit in such a way that the internal resistance or the resistances of the wires are negligible, then you know, how we would analyze that. So instead of fixing my model of this physical situation by acknowledging that wires have resistance, I want to fix it the other way. I want to acknowledge that my battery may not be perfect. The battery, so this is what we call ideal battery. Ideal battery will enforce this voltage difference no matter what happens. And this is the uh, contradiction that you come across if you are you know, too rigid about that no matter what happens. Because any physical battery you have will have imperfections. It will burn when connected that way. So, so how would you model the imperfections that any physical battery has to have? So that's the situation where the idea of internal resistance comes up. You will see that as you work through some of the homework questions. So instead of, so let's say these points A and B, they represent actual terminals out of a real battery. B is the positive terminal and A is the negative terminal. So when we try to model this realistically, instead of saying that inside the battery, it's an ideal battery. We acknowledge, all right, it's a real thing. It's not going to be ideal. Instead, what we model it as is it's a, a, an ideal battery in series with something that's non-ideal. So the ideal, the, the part of the battery that's non-ideal is that it does not have zero resistance. It has some idea of in some quantity of internal resistance. This is where the uh, picture black, bo uh, 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 black box picture is useful. Because this internal resistance, it's not something that you can take out of the battery and measure. This is just how we model the characteristics of the battery. So when you look at it here, 
Um, let's say we are trying to get the maximum current possible out of this battery. Um, how would you, so if you have this battery, and you know, or this set of two batteries, and let's say you are trying to get maximum current out of a possible, how would you connect to this, uh, how would you connect to this battery so that you get maximum possible current? Like, let me show you an example of measuring some current. So I could connect this battery to a light bulb here to get some current out of it, like you know the way you did it in lab, right? And so this measures 1.8 ampere of current. How would I modify this circuit so that I draw more than 1.8 amperes out of this battery? Hmm? Uh, the length. So here the wires are actually ideal wires. So the actual uh, well, so the actual. Man, I can't. All right, let me do it this way. Actual length of wire doesn't matter because what, it's a matter of how things are being modeled. So if the, uh, I can't. Okay, so if I somehow make it so that I can connect it with a shorter wire, that won't actually change anything because the length of the wire doesn't mean anything in this model. This is still raised 1.8. So not shorter wire, but how would you connect this so that um, the amount of current is greater? You have actually seen one in the lab. Yeah, put more light bulbs in parallel. That's another way I can do it. Uh, so let me do it this way. Um, let's see. I have to. So I'm going to be sure to measure current coming coming straight out of the battery. Uh, so let me put it this way so that I can read it more easily. So I'm going to you know hook up this wire, and um, just one more light bulb. Them in parallel, meaning I have a connection coming from here to here. So that's one that will give me 1.8 ampere again. And I have another connection coming from here to here. And when that's done, it'll double, draw double the current, 3.6 ampere. Um, I want you to imagine um, extending this to the most extreme possible. What is the arrangement of the circuit that would draw the maximum possible current? So Kevin, when you connect more light bulbs in parallel, what's the effect of doing that? In terms of, let's say, resistance of the circuit. When you add more light bulbs in parallel, what does that do to the resistance? Lower. You could say that's why there's more current here, according to Ohm's law. OK, what's the lowest resistance can be? Zero, right? How would you build a circuit with a zero resistance? Just, Just with the wires, right? That circuit. So let me do that. So I, you know, I, so I would never do this in an actual physical circuit, but with this simulation, I can imagine, all right, the max minimum amount of resistance possible, I would just connect it with the wires. So I can do it this way. And in the simulation, I think it has an unreasonable expectation for the battery. <laughs> but when you actually connect to something this way, you can measure the current. And you can measure essentially what is the maximum current output of a particular battery. And this would be another way of st uh, stating the imperfection of this battery. Because ideally, it would have been infinite there would be no maximum limit to how much current it can provide. The way we say with the normal force, there's no such thing as a maximum to the normal force. But in reality, there is. If I push down with enough force on this table, at some point I'll break the table instead of there being enough normal force. So with the battery, um, we, can, we can describe the imperfection of this battery either with the internal resistance or with some idea of the maximum current that the battery can provide. So how do you think these two are related? The maximum current that the battery can provide and the internal resistance that we use as a model um, for expressing the imperfection of the battery. How, um, they're related in a pretty simple way. It's not a trick question. So how are they related? Yeah, you, they are related through Ohm's law. So you could say that maximum current there 
So this is the actual circuit where maximum possible current out of this battery would flow before it burns or explodes or whatever. And this maximum current is given by Ohm's law. By V0, this is the, um, uh, what's sometimes called open circuit voltage. That's the voltage you would measure if you had an open circuit. The circuit is broken somewhere, so no current flowing. So, uh, so this uh, maximum current is, it, uh, let me write it down that way. Open circuit voltage of the battery divided by, um, I guess, uh, divided by the internal resistance. Um, so I guess R internal. Okay. So this is the idea behind internal resistance. It's uh, some resistance that's internal, inherent to whatever device you are looking at. And you know, it, it, it's a way of modeling this uh, actual physical device. And when you have modeled the uh, uh, battery this way, the physical battery this way, then even for this circuit, you will see that, well, it has no any self-contradiction. The, the thing that we say about battery, it no longer says that between the fi two physical terminals of the battery, this has to, to be the voltage. Instead, it says between one, uh, um, one end, one of the terminals, and the other point, which is internal to the battery and we can never access it. Um, the rule about the battery says that, well, this voltage difference is V0. But before you actually get the measurable voltage here, there can be additional voltage drop if there's current flowing. Yeah, so that's uh, internal resistance. Well, we spent more time on that than I intended. But um, so you will see that in some of the homeworks. But once you recognize this idea, then in terms of applying it, it's uh, actually pretty simple. You, once you write in the internal resistance, you just analyze the circuit as you would analyze any other circuit.